in this section uh, we'll explore commands that will allow us to uh, download files from the internet now specifically i'll focus on two commands one is vget and the other one is curl right so we'll spend uh, enough time on uh, these two commands so that you will be able to uh, look at all the options that you can use while downloading the files and then you can explore a few other commands that we have listed right basically hostname ping and nslookup and on the right side you can also see the uh, r functions that have similar functionalities right so download.file and then from the curl package you can use curl underscore download you also have the r.utils package right using which you can get the uh, host name uh, then there's the ping r package for uh, pinging a remote host and the curl package also has ns lookup for name server and ip details right so the first command that i will explore is we get right so i don't know how exactly this is pronounced but uh, i would use it as we get you can also call it as wget it's up to you right so let us take a look at this uh, command right this will allow us to uh, download uh, the contents of a url or the file from a uh, remote location right so we'll uh, download it over the internet now you can also specify the uh, file name to which you want to download the file or the uh, contents of the url now if you're downloading multiple files right then you can specify those urls in a file let us say in a text file and then you can ensure that all the urls uh, mentioned in that file are uh, read by the command and each file is downloaded one by one and stored in a uh, specific directory right that option is also there and then you can uh, and then you can uh, limit the download speed right using the limit rate uh, option you can turn off the output uh, using the quiet option uh, you can ensure only basic information is printed using the no verbose option uh, you can change the progress uh, bar type to a dot and then uh, there's also the time stamping option right so let us say we have a uh, file in a remote location which gets updated frequently and the local copy of this file uh, that we have should also be updated as and when the uh, remote copy is updated so one way is to use this time stamping option right whereby uh, we get will check if the time stamp of the uh, file in the remote location has changed right it will download it only if the time stamp has changed otherwise it will not download so that's one good option and when you are uh, downloading multiple files you can also use the wait option so that uh, it will wait between retrievals right so that we are not adding too much stress to the server right so that is one good option that is available and finally if uh, for some reason uh, the download stops right or gets interrupted then there's the C option to continue an incomplete download right so we're going to spend quite some time on this command and then we'll move on to a similar command which is curl right now to uh, show you these uh, different options initially i'll download the home page of the r project right so that way we'll get the whole index.html of that website and later on what i'll do is i will start downloading files from this website which is cranlogs.rstudio.com right so this has a log file of all r downloads and package downloads from, from the r studio cran mirror right so from that mirror of cran it has the uh, details of daily r downloads and uh, all the package downloads so if you are uh, a package developer yourself or if you are curious which package gets uh, downloaded in uh, which country right so then you can download these files it's basically a csv file and then you can run it through an r script to look at uh, how much download happens in which country right so i'm going to be downloading uh, the files from uh, here and to ensure that uh, we only downloads uh, files of smaller size 
uh, I'll download the files for uh, weekends that is specifically Sundays when the uh, file size is smaller because the downloads are lower and the file size is smaller right so let us get started first we will download the so first we'll download the contents of the uh, URL of the R project right so let us use we get and then I'll specify the URL which is R project org right so it's showing some details right uh, uh, resolving the URL then it's connecting uh, the HTTP request was sent uh, awaiting response right and uh, the HTTP response was okay it was 200 then it started downloading the uh, content of the URLs it was saved to index.html you can also see the progress bar and the time taken for download and other details right so now if you run ls you should be able to see the index.html file here now let us say i want to download the contents but i want to specify the file into which it is saved right i don't want it to save into index.html let us say uh, we'll download it into our homepage.html right so we'll use we get and then we'll use the o option specify the file name which is our homepage.html and finally the url again right so from the previous command the difference here is that we are using the o option and we are also specifying the file into which the contents of this URL have to be saved. Let us run this. Right now if I run ls I can see the file our homepage.html. Right so if you want to specify the file into which the contents are downloaded use the o option and then specify the file name with the appropriate extension. Right great. So now we have a basic understanding of how we get works now let us move on right and let us see how we can download the uh, log files from our studio cran mirror right so first i'll download the data for 13th october right so i'll come here uh, we get minus o and i'll call this october underscore 13 dot csv dot gz and then I'll specify the URL let us run this all right great so it has run now let us run ls again and we should be able to see the file october underscore 13 dot csv dot gz right so now we know how to uh, download the file not just the URL contents but the files from the internet and we also know how to specify the name of the file into which it has to be saved now let us say we have multiple URLs from which we are going to download the files right and instead of specifying the file names here in the command line what we'll do is we'll save it in a file called urls.txt right so we have done that right so we have a urls.txt file here and it has two urls right we are trying to download two files so it has two urls now we want to download both these files and save it into a folder or directory called downloads right so let us see how we do it with we get Right, I have to specify the folder or directory into which it will be downloaded which is downloads and then it has to read the files from this particular file right it has to read the URLs from this particular file and it has to download into the downloads folder so I'm going to use additional options here one is capital P and I 
right so what this does is it will first read the urls from a file right and then it will download the contents of the url or the file that is uh, there in that particular url in the remote location and it will store it into the downloads directory right that is what this is going to do let us run this and see right so you can see some output here now it says resolving the url right connecting to cranlogs.rstudio.com then it shows connected the http request was sent uh, the response was received then it shows the size of the file which is 28 mb and it shows saving to downloads dot slash the file name right so one file the download is over you can see it was downloaded in 25 seconds then it moved on to the next url that was specified in the uh, urls dot text file then it started reading the second url that is downloading the file from the second url and if you remember we had specified two urls one for 20 second one for 29 right and then it started downloading these files one by one right and both case it is giving you all this information right so the second file was about uh, 26 mb and it was downloaded in 21 seconds and both of them are now stored in the downloads directory right let us see if it is there right here you can see the downloads directory right and let us list the files in uh, downloads right so here you can see two files right one for 20 second one for 29 so whenever you are trying to download multiple files the uh, best way to do that is to store those urls in a file text file and then use the vget command along with the appropriate option to read in those urls from the file one by one and then download them and store in a specific directory that you have mentioned now let us say you want to uh, limit or control the download speed right and the best way to do that is to use the vget command specify the url or the file url now let us download the file for 6th october and then use limit rate option right here the value you give has to be very clear right uh, you have to specify whether it is in bits kilobits or megabits right so i am going to limit the download speed to uh, 1000 kilobits or 1 mb and let us see how this is going to work right so again it is showing us all the details so it's connected uh, the http request was sent uh, the response was received and the file is like 29 mb and it has started download now if you see here you can see the download speed right and it is within 1000 kilobits right it comes up to 959 949 but it never crosses 1000 kilobits right so whenever you want to uh, limit or control the download speed use this option limit rate and specify the uh, speed but be careful if you just uh, specify thousand it will become thousand bits and it will take a lot of time right it will go into hours right so always clearly specify whether it's bits kilobits or megabits right so now you know how to control the download speed let us see how we can turn off the output from we get right so we can see all this output right uh, that the uh, it connected it sent the http request it was received what is the size of the file where is it saving it is showing you the progress bar how much file has been downloaded what is the download speed and uh, what is the eta right or how much time it will take to complete this download right now let us say we don't want to view any of this right we don't want we get to show any of this output now what you can do is you can use the quiet option right that will ensure that there is no output okay so i will now download the file for 15th september right so here let us change it to 09 and here we'll make it 15.csv.gz right i'm uh, trying to download 
files only for the weekend so that the file size is small and now I will use the option quiet right so when you use the quiet option it will not show any output right so now you can see it is downloading the file but you don't see any of the output that we saw in the previous command right it is not showing whether it has connected whether the HTTP request was sent uh, what was the HTTP response received what is the file size there is no progress bar for the download uh, you don't see the uh, speed right download speed or ETA or any other details it is it will quietly download the file right so now you can see the prompt is back and you know that the file is downloaded by using ls we'll check if we have the file for 15 September right so here you can see the file we just downloaded right 15 September 2019 now another thing uh, is if you want to just print some basic information right you don't want all the output but you want to see some basic information right so you can use the no verbose option here or nb right using this we'll download the data for 8th september right so from 15th september we'll go to 8th september and this is slightly different right it will not show all the output but it will also not be quiet it will show some basic information right so you can see one line of information right showing the time the URL uh, what is the file size that was downloaded and uh, what is the name of the file in which it has been saved right so there's some very basic information in the previous case there was no information we used the quiet option and uh, before that we saw a lot of information right about connection the http request progress bar file size download speed etc now let us say uh, we want to change the progress uh, bar type to a dot right so we'll use we get and then we'll paste the URL of the file let me change the date here again now we'll download for 1st September and we'll use the option progress is equal to dot right progress is the option and we are saying we want the progress bar type to be a dot right now you can see that the progress bar has changed right it was different earlier now you can see dots and you can see a lot of information right showing the progress you can see the file size as it increases uh, the download speed and the ETA right so this is different from the previous case now let us go to the next option I am halting this download here it's going to take some time right the next option is when we are uh, downloading multiple files and we want to wait for some time before uh, retrieving each file right so if I go to this case right let us say we are going to download two files one is for 25th August right and Another one is for 18th August, right? Again, I'm sticking to the weekends so that the file size will be small and it won't take much time, right? And I'm going to use an option which is wait. And I'm saying wait for 10 seconds between the retrieval. Right, so it will first download the first file then wait for 10 seconds and then download the second file right let us try this right so the first file download has started right you can see that it has connected uh, the HTTP request is sent the download has begun right and you can also see the download speed and ETA right so now file 1 has been downloaded 
and it's going to wait for 10 seconds before it starts downloading the second file right so this is good if you don't want to again put lot of stress on the server right you will try one file wait for a few seconds or minutes and then you retrieve the second file right and this is good you can uh, retrieve multiple files but you don't end up sending uh, too many requests to the server right now another thing that i want to show you is how do you uh, start a incomplete download right so let us say you were downloading a particular file and then you will stop it right so I'll show that to you here. Now in this case, we will uh, download a file of the date August 11th. Right, I'll change the date here. Okay, this is the file that we are downloading. And as the download begins, I will stop it using Control C, okay. So the download started, but now I have interrupted and stopped this download. Now let us say we want to restart this download. That is complete this incomplete download. Then we can use this option, which is C, right? So dash C, and what it will do is it will restart the incomplete download, right? So it started from 17%, right? We stopped it around 15%. And if you can carefully observe, you can see some plus initially and then the download starts, right? So 15 to 17% of the download was completed. Then it started from there and it finished the download. So whenever you have in any interrupted or incomplete downloads and you want to restart that download, use the C option, right? Great. Now the last uh, option that we want to see is timestamping. Right. So like I said earlier, if you are having a file, a remote file, which is updated frequently and the local copy of that file, which you have, you want to keep that updated as well. Right. So then you can use this option called timestamping. What it does is it will check the timestamp of the file that is the remote file or the file in the remote location and it will start the download only if that timestamp has changed. Right. If the timestamp has not changed, then it will not download. Right. So now we just downloaded this file, right, which is of 11th August. Now let us use the timestamping option and see if it will download this file again. I think that typically the timestamp doesn't change because this file was for August 11th. Right, so I don't think the timestamp has changed and ideally this file should not be downloaded again. Right, so see here, look at the uh, output carefully. It connected, right, and it sent the HTTP request and the res it received the HTTP response which said that the file has not been modified, right. It checked the timestamp of this file on the server and then it received the HTTP response saying that this file has not been modified. The file has not been modified on server. That is why it is omitting download. So this is good when you have a file which is modified or updated and you want to have the latest uh, copy or updated copy of that file you can use this timestamping option it will check if the file has been modified on the server only if the file has been modified on the server it will download that file otherwise it will omit download right great now we have gone through all the options of the pget command i would suggest that you also try it with uh, different urls different files and if you get any questions, if you have any questions, you can always write to us, right? So let me move on to the next command that we are going to use, right? Which is the curl command, right? Again, the curl command uh, is used for 
transferring data to and from a server but we will only explore how to again download a, a URL or a file from the internet right so I will again go back and this time I will use curl to download the home page of the R project right we did the same with uh, we get earlier now I'll do it with curl right so the difference is that in the earlier case we get actually downloaded and saved it into a file called index.html but here curl is literally downloading and printing the uh, HTML file to the terminal right so uh, this one fundamental difference between curl and we get now if you want to redirect this output into a file instead of the terminal then you can use the uh, O option again right we use it with uh, we use it with we get now we'll use it with curl as well right curl then I'll use the O option then we'll say my home page dot html and then I'll specify the URL again right so now we should read the contents of this URL and it should redirect the output to my home page dot html right so it showed you some uh, basic information what is the file size how much has been received what what is the average uh, download what is the uh, average download speed how much time uh, it took to download this URL right now another way to download the uh, contents of the URL and redirect the output to a file is to do it like this right I specify the URL and then I will use the symbol to redirect the output to my new file which is my home page 2.html right so again now instead of downloading and printing the output to the terminal it is downloaded and saved to the file which is my home page 2.html so if you see it here you can see both those uh, html files right you have my home page .html and my home page 2.html one last option that i want to show you is if you want the download to happen silently right if you want the download to be silent you don't want to see any output any messages or any error messages then use the S option right S stands for silent which means uh, the download should happen silently right it will not show you any information it will just download right so now let us download the same uh, URL and save it into a new file my home page 3.html but this time it will do it silently right so here you don't see any output no information nothing but if you list the files you should be able to see my home page 3.html right so we have looked at two commands we get and curl right you can use either of this uh, I have explored more options with we get than curl but you can look at the documentation of both these commands look at all the options and experiment it with different URLs and uh, different files and also uh, look at combining those options right now in the next section uh, we'll learn about the sudo command which is for uh, super user or root privileges.